can't buy you. It. It, it can't, can't. It can't buy it, can it? To see what she's come through, and she's handling this occasion so well. Giving that one a smack, Andy Week. Well, you think the only thing that could beat Pedersen now is herself? I actually had that written down for the question of who can beat Emily Pedersen today. And I mean, it uh, is Emily Pedersen. I mean, the tourists can make a couple of birdies here to finish, and and, and still, you know, unless Pedersen makes a mistake. I think that's been the only person that could have beaten her all day, in my opinion. And the old Emily Pedersen would have been vulnerable in this position. Not the new one. I remember back in her uh, rookie year 2015 when she lost out to Celine Airban at the French Open. She had a five shot lead at one stage, lost at the third hole of the playoff. And burst into tears she's come a long way since then and that's trying to use the backs stop there on the 18th carried it a few yards too far yeah for once she's not the uh, the star from southern spain at this course today because she's been outshone by her amateur opponent, Anna Pelaev. Spain has been such a regular stop for the ladies European tour last season here three years but of course this year that's been unable to happen I'm assuming Pelaev is here in two yeah, another deep breath chance to finish in style from the upslope can fly this nearly all the way to that back flag Between there. Okay, given what we've seen before, very unlike her. You could see she had quite a narrow stance. Oh, that was for a par for Sabran. Costly bogey on 17. Yeah, she's gone from fifth on her own into a four way share of sixth. Up there, it's probably cost her about ten, eleven thousand dollars. Kelsey McDonald still standing there. She's made birdie hit. as well for Gadali. Sanna Newton chipping up the green on 18. <laughs> Just needed a straighter faced club there. Could have played that with a wedge or a nine iron to try and get it to run up that slope on these very soft greens.
Oh, well above the feet here. Trying to stop it going left. It's well controlled there. By Hadoui. effort from Pedersen. Went for this green yesterday, laid up to a good number there, 90 yard pitch in. No need to be brave anymore. with this 17th the ball is always above your feet club face got caught there heel got caught in the ground flipped over put the ball left what a fabulous round of golf it's been from uh, Pelayet Sure, sure, mark that and hopefully pop it in for a round of 67. It's been good to be back home, but uh, Atha Munoz yeah. well, started Thursday morning, four bogeys, first five holes. I'm sure that was a shock to the system on our home course here at Guadalmina. Still managed to finish top ten. 69 in round four. One Spanish winner of the Spanish Open. She is it. There's only been one Spanish amateur to finish in the top 10 of the uh, Spanish Open. That's Carlotta Segando. We're about to have number two, I think, in a moment. She's in hand. She scares the hole, but unfortunately, she'll be tapping that in for a par five. Merging it in. There's a good finish, nonetheless. Great start as well. She was the first round leader. And uh, 67 to start, 68 to conclude. Not quite good enough in between, but uh, another top 10 finish. And, She'll finish in that top 10 on the race to Costa del Sol as well. But as well as Munoz and Newton have done here, Sophie, it's all been about Palaeth in this group. It really has. And this back nine, she's had three birdies, the rest pars. We said, would she get nervous when she got near the top? She hasn't really. Would have liked to have birded one of the last two par fives, that's for sure. But to go out there with a Spanish legend in Azahar de Munoz around her home course to beat her score and to become the best amateur to ever perform in the Spanish Open. Brilliant performance. Third place finish 
for Anna Pelaez. Well, I'm sure we'll see her back in the Spanish Open next year as a professional. Uh, from her fellow Spanish amateur there, Petra Hercari. The best ever finish by an amateur in the Spanish Open. Well done. Seventeenth green Pedersen for Birdie to get it to minus fourteen. It's relentless. Pedersen marches on. And she can enjoy the walk down eighteen, as she has done fairly often in recent months. Four shot lead to take to the 72nd hole for Emily Pedersen. Dowley waited for the green on 18. Playing 479 yards, it's dog leg left to right. Second shot is uphill. You like the look of this swing? Yeah, I do, yeah. It's been nice to see a few, I would just say, new players out on tour. I enjoyed watching her in Team Special K in Saudi Arabia. I'm going to take it straight at that leaderboard in the background. Toad it left. Well, there have been some excellent displays, haven't there, in this final round of the Andresia Costa del Sol opened at Espana. We've had that uh, fabulous 66 finish for Chloe Frankish, tied for sixth, which would equal her best on the Ladies European Tour. The 69 from Malka Paulson in her rookie year, first top 10. Anna Pelaez, best ever finish by an amateur at the Spanish Open with that super 67. But no one's been able to live with Emily Pedersen yet again coming to the 72nd hole. Oh, final hole for someone who's building a profile as a, a new potential legend on the Ladies European Tour. Emily Pedersen, three wins in a row. If this is whooshed down the middle of the fairway, which it is, it is in the bag. She's been sensational the last three weeks. It's as simple as that. Amazing. Look the part, Trish, hasn't she? she absolutely. She has. Yeah, absolutely. Hottest player on the planet right now, bar no one. In a couple of weeks off to the US Open, we'll see what she can do there. Materia, <laughs> lovely personality and a really nice golfer. She's tried her very best to push Pedersen all the way. Good looking golf swing, that, isn't it? She's just a good player, isn't she? Yeah. But no one can live with the Dane that's just been sparkling. Final tee shot for Hadwick. Yeah, and she's played very well. You know, in this sort of this company in the last round, not something she's particularly used to. She's performed admirably, I think. It's what you want, isn't it? You, you want to get into the last groups, big players, big scenes, and see if you can perform under the cosh. That's a nice way to finish. Fabulous shot. Kelsey should, uh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've said earlier in the week, I'm a big fan of Kelsey. She should do so much better. A lot once of potential. She, once she starts believing in herself, if she really thinks she can go somewhere, she can. She's got all the ability in the world. Nice to finish with a birdie if she can do that. Not been the day Sabron was looking for. 
currently one over par. Hopefully can get this one up and down to get back to level for the day. Sneak back inside that top ten. Never look comfortable over that. The dreaded knee slide. It's all a little deflating, isn't it? Such high hopes at the start of the day. Put yourself in position where, you know, you dream of putting yourself on the trophy, your name, along with the likes of uh, Laurie Davies and Mel Reed and Arthur Munoz, Rosie Jones and, of course, Marie Lord de Lorenzi, who we've been talking about quite a bit this week, seeing as uh, Emily Pedersen's about to emulate the French player here in the next few minutes. Assuming Emily will be waiting for the, the green to clear, given where she's thumped her tee shot. Gadali coming off a really good week last week. She came second in the team in Saudi, 18th in the individual. Needs to get this one up and down to remain inside the top 10. Relief, relief not dropping a shot on the 72nd hole. Start thinking about the money about now. Don't want to go spending any of those euros. Yeah, that was an eventful 70. Well played, Man and Gadali. Second top 10 on the ladies' European tour for her. waiting for the green you might have just caught a glimpse of Emily Pedersen's ball there as well a good 20 yards or so ahead of her of the year, Luna Sabron. She hasn't finished worse than 11th. That is uh, great consistency. She has had a win amongst them as well. That was uh, on the Access Tour, the second tier of Ladies European Golf. But after a second in Saudi Arabia, it's going to be a share of 10th place. Thank you. 
That's a birdie birdie finish for Kelsey McDonald. Unfortunately, not the weekend, though. She was looking for, she still searches for that first tour title. So just three players left to complete the 2020 yep. Ladies European Tour season. to get all of this to get it close to the green. Yeah, really, really good golf shot. It was a lucky with a tee shot. It didn't get a bounce. Made the most of it with that second. But of course, it was yesterday with her second 218 where Emily Pedersen took grasp of this Andalusia Costa del Sol opened to España. It was an eagle where she hit the front for the very first time and she hasn't been caught. It's that favourite club in the bag again, Sophie. Maybe a chance to show off one more time. Doesn't need all of it. A magic club in Pedersen's bag. She's going to finish this magnificent season in style. Well, it's been a real pleasure, hasn't it? We've been uh, following her through these victories the last three weeks. We've uh, almost run out of superlatives for her. We have. I've gone from wanting her to win to expecting her to win. Do we also struggled in the final round in Switzerland in the last group, but really hasn't today. Settled in very well. Golf game holding up. And for Aturios, I suppose it was a, a case of just didn't get going fast enough. It took until the, the 12th hole for her to get her first birdie, which means it's centre stage Emily Pedersen again, walking up 18. again enjoying the walk up the 72nd hole You know, and we, we've spoken about Pedersen not even being at her very best today, but she's got a part to play the, the final round in seven under. Oh, I think she was at her best as she got to the turn. That shot into nine, and then she really stepped up. Yeah. I think this week she hasn't been at her best, but this back nine is really impressive golf. I mean, she's four under par, and she's missed a couple of short pots. Would you say the 12th may be a turning point? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Got very lucky off the tee. Finished right behind a tree, but managed to chip it out to two feet and tap it in. Just went up a gear for me on this back nine today. Move it? 
Laurie spoke about learning from Emily Pedersen this week. I think what you're going to learn about is how steady she is, how she wasn't dropping shots when there was opportunities to drop shots. She's held a good few par puts this week, whereas Nuria has, has been up and down, has made plenty of birdies but thrown in too many bogeys. That's what she'll learn from Pedersen this week. Surya's very good player. It's going to be a, a really good finish as well. It's going to be a, a fifth birdie in those final seven holes, which is uh, some doing. Well, we said that 